Okay, so this uh, next video is the last one for today, and this is just going to be a really quick kind of get started on rendering animations with RenderMan. Um, previously, we've only done still images, or we did like the uh, the RAM preview render type thing on the first day with the uh, solar system. But for this, now we actually have to render out full scenes, uh, you know, animations with RenderMan. And so the way that you do animations is you don't render out the movie, you render out the individual frames and then compile them later in your program of choice. You can do it in Premiere, you can do it in After Effects, you can do it in others as well. Um, so I have this animation that's really just animating this rack focus. Um, and actually, you know what? For the sake of having something that you can actually see the result of, I'm going to... Oh, it looks like I already quit Render Man. I'm going to open up a different scene here real quick. You will remember this from last week, or if you're just binging my videos for some reason uh, from a couple hours ago. Here is a bouncing ball. Now we want to animate, or render this animation. So, the first thing that we need to do is set our camera. Uh, so I'm going to create a camera. I'm just going to do a regular camera. I'm going to set my perspective to be looking through the camera, and I'm going to position my camera. It looks like I need to be over here. Nope, I don't need to be over there. I need to be... Let's see, camera, look at camera, position camera. Okay, there's my bouncing ball. Now I'm going to set up my camera here real quick. I'm going to set my film gate. I'm going to set the film gate to widescreen. I'm going to zoom the camera out so I can actually see the action. And let's make sure that looks great. Last thing I'm going to do is just move the ground plane. Let's go up so it covers the whole thing. All right. So I've got an animation I want to render. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my render settings. All right. And we have first our file output. And I'm going to output a TIFF. Let's do a regular TIFF there. And uh, the most important kind of setting that you need to change to render animations is this frame animation extension. You see right now it says name.extension, so it would be like bouncing ball dot tiff. Uh, and it says single frame. We need to change that to a non-single frame. So we've got five different options here that have name dot number dot extension. That's what the little hashtag is for. Uh, I like name underscore frame number dot extension. That's the convention that I like. You'll see a frame padding, and if we look up here in our file name example, Frame padding is the number of digits that will include in the name. So if you're going to have a 1,000 frame render, uh, then you'll need four digits. This is only going to be a 90 frame render, so I'll bump that down to two. Actually, I'll do three just for padding. Uh, scroll down a little bit more, and now we can set our frame range. So my timeline is set to 1 to frame 90, but it's only going to render frame 1 to frame 10. So I set my end frame to frame 90. Now it will render all of those frames by frame. So if you only want to render every other frame, then you can set by two. Uh, renderable camera. This is also very important. We want to make sure that we are rendering with the camera you know, that we're intending to. So make sure this is set to what you want. Uh, and then image size preset. Uh, for our purposes, I want a minimum of 720. Uh, 1080 is great, but it will take longer to render. For this example, while I'm recording, I'm going to say 540. Uh, then you also set your resolution. All, you know, all of this is the same as still renders. Oh, I also need to make sure I'm on RenderMan, which I wasn't before. Okay, so now I need to make sure I set my format. I'll do just TIFF 8, keep it simple. Okay, all that's good. Now I'm going to set my sampling. Um, I'm going to really turn mine way down. I'm just going to do a 32. Samples looks good. Okay, and then I'm going to hit close. Oh, also in the comment tab, you can see where it's going to save it up here, your path and your image size. Hit close. 
And I'm going to pause this real quick and just make sure I have RenderMan textures on my ball so that it looks right. All right, materials applied. So I've got my uh, render settings set up. Now to actually render, I just go up to the RenderMan menu and click on Batch Render. When I do that, I'm going to play through it for a second so you can see what it is that you're rendering. And then it'll think, and then a window will open. This will show you the queue of everything that's rendering. So you can see the job. Okay, this is the task that it's doing. And then you can see all of the frames. Right now I've got it's got 93 tasks to complete. Okay, you can see the elapsed time of each frame. Now, this is a super simple animation. It's rendering one frame every second. Uh, which is great. Your renders will not be this quick. So you need to make sure that you give yourselves plenty of time to do it. And really only render the frames that you need. After you kind of look at the animation and think, oh, you know, I think in the edit I'm only going to use frames 30 to frames 70. Then only render frames 30 to 70. You can always go back and render frame 20 to 30 if you end up needing a little bit more on the front end. Um, but, you know, with how long it takes for each render, just, you know, only do what you have to. Uh, so you're not wasting a bunch of time on renders. So that's how you render. And then on the export, you can see this is where it, it kicked it out to. Uh, my RenderMan folder. And then I believe it's this job right here. You look at the images, master layer. Nope, that's not it. Let's see, that is going to... There it is, bouncing balls, images. There we go. Okay. So that is rendering all of those out. And then as soon as that's done, I will uh, show you how to compile them. This is rendering. In your render settings, in the features tab, you've got motion blur, um, which is great when you have a lot of motion in your scene it just kind of makes things feel a little bit smoother uh, I'll probably go through this a little bit m in, in a little bit more depth next week I just want to get this information out so you can start rendering your turntables uh, now and not wait another week my render is done nice and quick now I have opened up After Effects and here is how you compile something I'll say never er Okay, so uh, in After Effects, I'm going to just do a new project, and I'm going to import. I'm going to navigate to where all of my exports are, okay, which is in my RenderMan folder in the project, and it's here, it's here. And I'm going to select the first image, open up my options. I'm just going to select the first image and make sure TIFF sequence is selected, and then click Open. And we will do... Uh, straight unmatted because there is an alpha channel. Click OK. So it's going to import all of those frames as one sequence. From there I can say new comp from selection. So now I have my sequence. And there's my bouncing ball. You can see that it's dark. So it, that's because I didn't do uh, burn in mapping on save. I also uh, didn't do um, motion blur but that's fine. But once I have that established, then I can come over to my effects. Uh, and let's add a, uh, let's do curves. I'm just going to kind of bring up that exposure mm -hmm. fairly ex in an extreme way. That'll work. Uh, and from here, you can then export. Uh, you can render your... Uh, render animation. Actually, let me also just real quickly undo that. I'm going to go back to my bouncing ball. I'm going to add a solid. Let's do a lighter solid there. Okay, I'm going to put that behind it because we've got the alpha channel. Let me actually, instead of that, let me add exposure. Turn off curves. Turn up my exposure here.
Okay, that'll work. Now I'm going to run this out. We don't need to do lossless. We can just do h.264 will be fine. Okay, click OK. Click OK, set my destination, which is going to be here and here and in my project and in my movies. Save bouncing ball, click save, hit render. It will render nice and quick. I'm going to quit After Effects. I don't save because it didn't really do much. Okay, we'll save Maya, I'll quit that. And now, in my Maya project folder, in that movies folder come on it should be but it isn't where'd it go maybe I should have saved that After Effects file oh, system I must have clicked on the wrong thing anyway here is now my bouncing ball animation lovely and you can see adding that exposure didn't really hurt the the um, you know the tones or anything, uh, and that is how you render an animation. Again, this was the about as simple as it gets. About one second a frame. If you get, or as you get more complicated, that render time will shoot way up. So give yourselves plenty of time. I cannot stress that enough.